Hi, my name is Stephen, and this is Astro Indicator Update, Excursions into Practical Astrology. And to today is July 4th, 2019. This is episode 14. We're going to look at a void, of course, moon calendar, Dow Jones Industrial Gold Charts, and Tulsi Gabbard's Astrology. So um, this is the content, which I just went over. And let's get into the Void of Course Moon calendar. Uh, as usual, here's a little definition. The Void of Course Moon is the period of time that it takes for the moon to transition from one astrological sign to another. And this occurs every two and a half days. And sometimes it, it can happen in a matter of minutes, 15 minutes or so. And every so often it takes much longer, like 24 hours, 30 hours. It's rare, but it happens. Typically, it, it's shorter, half hour. Every on average, a long one might be, you know, three or four hours. What's the significance of this? Well, when it lasts a longer period of time, then people start noticing a shift in their mood and psychology, and this happens kind of across the board and from the tradition of astrology from my own experience it pays to pay attention to these time periods because what generally happens and the key words that i use um, are that there's a sense of disengagement a sense of shifting into to neutral now that doesn't sound so bad and it's not it's not bad because if you can uh, shift your 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 work schedule so that uh, you're not doing critically important things then you'll be fine because void of course moon periods are great for uh, kicking back resting regrouping playing and so forth but what happens when they are on a wednesday afternoon and it's a void of course moon well then you may have issues because you will ideally you would have or will have uh, rescheduled um, some you know important activities to another day if you saw it coming up in your calendar uh, generally speaking you want to avoid important uh, activities that are critical to your business avoid making big big decisions don't spend a lot of money don't buy that new car and don't start important you know phases of your life or stages of your life so what do we have this week on Tuesday, August 6th, this is Pacific Daylight Time, at 8.30 a.m., a void, of course, moon ends. So it was taking place prior to that time on Tuesday. And I, and I include it here because at 8.30 a.m. on the Pacific Coast, that's 11.30 on the East Coast. So all morning long, the moon had been void, of course. Thursday, August 8th, it, it, the moon go, goes void. That's the, exp, the terminology that's used at 7.58 a.m. And it lasts to 1.35 p.m. So that's, that's sort of average. That's not, uh, you know, an outlandish period of time. But we are talking about, you know, five and a half hours or so where the moon is void, of course. And if I was you know, had something scheduled, you know, I would like that I felt was important, then if I can, I would reschedule it. If I can't, then I would do everything I can, or everything possible to uh, attend to the details of that activity. You know, I really wouldn't want to sign something important like a contract, but if I have to do something important, then I would just double check everything. Okay, so let's move on. Well, we've had an interesting week. A few weeks ago in my um, in my podcasts, in my video, I was talking about we had some astro energy dates coming up that usually reflect some volatility, and that's not, that's what we're getting, and it may continue here for another week. The technicals are going to be important. You know, so many of the high frequency trading and so forth are based on technicals, and I have two charts to look at here. One does not have my astrology in it this one and the next one does but um, you know we can draw these in different ways we've come down big we did though have uh, a candle with a long lower wick on Friday 
usually indicating that there's a good chance that we make it a bounce out of this. We are getting a little oversold on the RSI. We're just in the crossover phase and the MACD. Um, so what's going to happen? Well, let's look at the next chart. So here, the vertical lines are the astrological dates where usually some change is in the wind. And, uh, you know, in, in some respects, you know, in my, from my research, I would say the change happened several days ago. And that's really sort of when this big drop was generated. And of course, we had the Fed meeting. If you watched my last couple of videos, I knew that there was going to be something very surprising happen or shocking or unexpected. It wasn't exactly what I thought. I thought the Fed was going to cut more. What happened was that um, uh, the chairman contradicted himself in his press conference, and it, it seemed to be, appear that he was not going to be as um, accommodative in the future. So the market started tanking. Then we had uh, sort of bad news out of from Trump concerning the tariffs with China, and that added to sort of this downdraft. But here, what we're facing right now, at least from a technical standpoint, is that these horizontal lines that are drawn in are support and resistance, at least the way I draw them. This is the past high from last year. I'm using DIA as a proxy for the Dow. So, you know, so I'm not going to be giving you certain figures. Um, so look at this past high. We're well through this past high. If we don't get back above it fairly soon, like this week, the technical people are going to say that all this was a fake breakout, okay? And that will add to some negative sentiment in general. So what does the astrology say? Well, the astrology says you know, it looks like we have a bounce right off of this, this support area, that blue line right here. And, um, and we have some, some more volatility. Now, with it being oversold like it is, I kind of see this as more of a, a bounce possibility. And particularly that first line, first vertical line, <clears throat> is the ninth. And um, that one just traditionally from my research is strong volatility happening on the 9th which is a Friday beyond that I haven't drawn them in we get into more bullish astrological signals so we have to see how these support resistance lines you know hold up if we break below this lower one I don't see a lot of support here okay so the powers that be they have an interest, politically, <laughs> financially, and whatever, to get this thing to bounce. And so look at Friday and see where we end up on Friday. You know, I, I, I am uh, concerned about this market if, you know, if it drops below this support area, uh, even though we're getting oversold, okay? I think we could bounce through August because I am I see more bearish energy and sentiment in in general occurring in the US in general in September and let's get into that so here's the US chart and oftentimes I, I, I play you know all those vertical lines in the preceding chart were based on looking at the Dow Jones astrology specifically Okay, but, but the Dow Jones and, you know, a lot of economics is um, influenced by general sentiment. And when you look at general sentiment, you also want to look just at the USA chart, which is this inner ring right here. This is just, if we're looking at this inner ring, that's the chart of the United States. And I've done past videos on it, and you can look in much more detail than I'm going in today. So let's just, this is sort of a review if you've been with me, because we're going to look at the transits, which are the outer ring of the, that are affecting the U.S. right now. And what's occurring, here's the transit of Saturn, the transit of Pluto. They're generally speaking opposite these important elements in the U.S. chart. 
here's the Sun, Mercury, Venus, uh, Jupiter, okay? Well, what's happening as we get into September, Saturn is retrograde and it comes back essentially exactly opposite the U.S. Sun, okay? And so, you know, from the symbols in astrology, you can sort of forecast that the, the sentiment is going to become more pessimistic. pessimistic. I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, you know, there probably will be economic, social events taking place that indicate that maybe indeed we are slipping further into a recession, that, um, you know, rather than things getting better, they're getting worse, and so forth. And this, these things are continuing for a while. So we have Saturn opposite the Sun. We have Saturn actually squaring its own position. So it's kind of doubling up on the Saturn pessimistic, slow, discouraging, um, you know, heavy sort of energy. We have Uranus in, in conjunct the Ascendant, which is becoming more exact. In conjunct is 150 degrees. Here's the Ascendant of the U.S., seven, so at least the one I use, seven Sagittarius. And so something here, that Uranus energy that brings surprises, things that are unexpected, something shocking, that is entering the picture into the U.S. scene in general. And these energies, these challenging energies, are going to continue into next year. Um, they're going to be so, somewhat, you know, counterbalanced by a Jupiter energy beginning early next year. But between now and early next year, the U.S. has some challenging things occurring. And, um, um, you know, particularly just in the arena of revelations, uncovering really sort of dark, uh, seedy, um, um, unsavory aspects to, you know, our culture, our leaders, and so forth. All through next year, those things are going to continue. Uh, maybe it's, you know, could be related to the Jeffrey Epstein business and the, the, the widening um, scope of that investigation and so forth, but other things could come up. It's you know those are the types of things I'm t that Pluto represents, and Pluto is going to continue to be strong in the U.S. chart through next year, even into um, 2021. So, brief overview: Saturn is getting stronger here in September. The bullishness in the U.S. in the in the Dow Jones Industrials that I see in the sh very short term through August is ending, and so you know September is always a tricky month. You know, be careful trading in September. That's my point. Okay, quick look at gold. Um, I might look at my notes really quickly, but you know Thursday was a wild day in the marks. I mean, look at that bounce back on Thursday. Um, in the gold astrology, again, the gold is those the vertical lines in this chart. Um, we have something happening on August 10th, which is a little tricky because it's a Saturday. And so sometimes that energy is mitigated. Sometimes it's um, sh it shows up on Friday. In general, we, do, we have um, bullish energy taking place in in the gold chart I would say generally speaking through September okay and I haven't drawn them in but we had a nice bounce off this trend line here if, you know regardless of the fundamentals and the news and so forth we we've had a bounce we are in a sort of neutral tr territory in the momentum indicators and we have supportive astrology continuing in this chart. Okay, I didn't don't have the dollar, um, you know, charts or information with you, but the dollar kind of looks like it may have hit a high point and is now reversing. And even though the dollar and gold recently have seems like they have they have um, disconnected from each other. Uh, if the dollar starts dropping, you know, just historically, people are going to see that as being a positive for gold. Moving on. <clears throat> okay. Tulsi Gabbard. 
I mean, I have to admit that I'm I'm sort of an uh, anti-imperialist, anti-war person. So some of the things that Tulsi says, I I agree with. But I was just curious, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna share with you this little story. So I wanted to do another person. I hadn't done a person for a while. Just briefly looked at it, some public figures astrology. And so this morning, I needed to, to replenish some supplements that I take. And one of them is an herb that is, you know, its Western name is holy basil. It helps with uh, allergies and respiratory things. But in India, <laughs> I just ordered it this morning. In India, it's called Tulsi. And so, you know, all of a sudden it just dawned on me that maybe I should look at Tulsi Gabbard's chart. And, you know, you know, my this is very brief, very superficial look, but, you know, I'll just spend a couple minutes on it. But I looked at her chart and I went, wow. I mean, this person, this is sort of, she, she just embodies what might be called a peaceful warrior, okay? She's just got strong energy through this chart. And um, just for example, you know, here we got a lot of things in Aries, Sun in Aries, conjunct Mars. Mars is leading the Sun, which accents it, but also we have Venus. So he's got a Venus, Sun, Mars conjunction in Aries. Okay, this person likes to, she takes risks, she likes to win, she, you know, she uh, is very independent. And, uh, and on top of this, this conjunction dynamic, everything is being is opposite Pluto in her chart, which adds just another dimension of willpower, okay, and uh, determination. So, <clears throat> I mean, this woman's a powerhouse. And if it wasn't for Venus up here, I mean, she would be fighting in the, you know, MMA or or something, um, but it doesn't surprise me that she was in the military, but the Venus, you know, it's like she found out what that's all about. And so, but she is a fighter, no doubt about it. Um, I don't know what her ascendant is. I just know the time of birth and place of birth. What's other, what also stands out, she's got Moon and Leo. She has very little Earth in her, her chart. And so, <clears throat> whether it's through um, consultants or partners or staff or whatever, but um, you know, keeping her organized and practical and um, um, <clears throat> you know, m monitoring her energy expenditure maybe <laughs> would be a good thing because she is just action oriented to the max and um, and it's just fascinating to to see this so you know so strongly set up in her chart now what's happening for her from a transit standpoint again this outer ring is that she has Saturn increasingly squaring these personal elements in her chart through the fall and she has Pluto squaring it so she's right now she's doing being personally challenged on a number of levels you know questioning you know just her whole identity and sense of purpose and, and so forth you know whether she is capable of handling this candidacy for president is you know is you know is in her mind but somewhat fortunately she has Jupiter is by transit is right here right now it is in um, Sagittarius it is creating a very positive dynamic with her moon and her Sun um, Jupiter is going direct this month and increasingly over the next couple months Jupiter which is you know positivity, faith, good fortune, um, you know, belief in oneself and, you know, experiencing success, particularly over the next couple of months, it's going to be in a very positive dynamic with her chart and it, it will offset some of the concerns and, and setbacks and maybe, um, you know, 
it seems like the press likes to beat up on her a little bit because I think she is anti-war because it it threatens them you know the financial interests of that whole industry but she has support coming into the picture with Jupiter over the next few months and then by January Jupiter will have moved into a square position to her son in this dynamic here and that square position actually will be supportive and so she she has a very interesting chart you know for this presidential candidacy and Jupiter when you get you know you know I have I think it's a completely long shot but of Jupiter if she, by chance you know she was you know nominated or someone selected her as a vice president or something a running mate um, she has Jupiter squaring her son uh, during the time of the election in November 2020 and so that's just fascinating to see because that's a, a very positive you know setup astrologically for I would say for an election so anyway I just want to take a quick look at that uh, we can check back. Oh, I had this one other thing. I, so if you don't know anything about declinations and you're a student of astrology, you need to learn about declinations and and find out where to get them. I use an app on my iPad, which is called Astro Gold, and it's a quick area to get declination. Here's Tulsi's declinations. And sometimes you can just see things that you can't see in the um, regular chart. For example, here we've got Mercury at one degree north latitude in the declinations, and that is what's called parallel. And it's parallel her um, her uh, Jupiter Saturn conjunction, and you wouldn't know that the three are actually working closely together. You wouldn't know that by just looking at her her chart, um, and so you know she does have a certain um, you know, gravitas and success in speaking. Um, you know, she can voice her opinion and she puts it out there and it carries some some weight that you wouldn't you wouldn't see as being so strongly uh, emphasized if you were just looking at the chart. Okay, well that's it for that's long enough for today. Again, my name is Stephen. I have a master's degree in psychology, art background, been studying astrology for 40 years. <clears throat> Strong interest in applying it to the financial markets. And I am a sound money cryptocurrency advocate, basically, in general. I do accept Bitcoin donations. And um, if you would like to subscribe, please subscribe, hit the like button, and so forth. But I uh, hope to be back in about a week. So thanks for listening. Bye for now.